Do you ever find yourself waking up in the morning and having no idea what you're gonna wear on a day in the mountains? How cold is it? How many layers do I have to wear? Do I bring soft shell, hard shell, wool, poly pro? In this video, we're gonna go through all of that. I'm gonna share a couple of principles from my system and give you a couple of ideas and show you some products that I've really enjoyed using over the last few years. Norwegian people have a saying, I think I butchered that, but essentially it means there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. And I really like that sentiment, but you can go out in any weather. We're gonna start looking at base layers. So a base layer is obviously your next to skin layer. The idea is that it keeps your skin dry by wicking moisture away. So when you're sweating, the base layer, the job is to pull that moisture away from you and keep you dry and warm. I feel very exposed right now. So ideally, your base layer should be light, it should be comfortable, it should be warm, it should wick moisture away from the skin and it should dry quickly. Now there's generally two fabrics that I use for base layer and that is merino wool or polypropylene. The wool is almost as good as insulating a human as it is a sheep. It's very comfortable, wool stays warm when it's wet, it has excellent wicking properties and probably one of the best parts about wool is that it tends not to smell as much as polypropylene. So I can generally wear wool for a week or two without it getting like really rancid. Whereas a polypro after one or two days, it's terrible. So being a natural fiber, wool is obviously a lot more expensive than polypropylene. You can pick up a base layer of polypro for maybe $30, $40 or less, but wool tends to push up towards the 60, 70, 80, $100 mark. So there's a big difference there. And for that reason, I like both. I'll generally have a pair of polypropylene base layer if it's a multi-day trip because I'll sleep in the polypro and I'll be using the merino wool as my active layer because that's when I'm sweating, that's when it's gonna get a little bit dirty. And so for that reason, I tend to use merino wool when I'm active and polypro when I'm sleeping. But you might like to switch that around and just use merino as your sleeping layer because it's more comfortable. There's no rules, it's totally up to you. So this is usually my true base layer, my next to skin base layer, I like to wear a t-shirt. This is just a wool merino shirt from Decathlon. These long johns underneath, Long pants are from Odlo, and they're 100% wool as well, merino wool. Base layer doesn't only have to be one layer. You can add as many base layers as you like. For example, if I wanted to put two wool t-shirts on, then you can, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. You can wear multiple base layers on top of one another. Now, one of the downsides about wool that I have to mention is that it's more difficult to wash. It's a little bit fiddly. You can't just throw it in with everything else in the washing machine. You have to wash it on a colder temperature, on a more delicate cycle. So if you're someone that's likely to just throw everything into the machine, then go for PolyPro. There is different weights based on GSM, which is grams per square meter. On the lower end, it's usually 100 or 90. On the higher end, it can be anywhere up to 300, which becomes very close to being more like a mid-layer. This one that I'm wearing right now is from Devold and it's a 200 GSM. So somewhere between a base layer and a mid-layer. We tend to think of base layers as just long pants and a long sleeve shirt, but there's actually so much more than that when you include socks, gloves, beanies, or a buff. The aim of a base layer is to cover as much of your skin as possible with a thin, wicking, insulating fabric. This whole time I've been saying buff, but everyone here says boof. <laughs> so that's about it for base layers, but I want to mention one more thing, and that is to avoid cotton. Cotton is typically a very average insulator. If it gets wet, then you're gonna be in trouble because it's just gonna make you colder. It clings to the skin when you sweat, it takes forever to dry, and it can be very uncomfortable. So there's no hard rules, but definitely for winter, cotton is a no-no. Okay, let's talk about mid-layers. The idea with a mid-layer is that it traps heat. It's an insulating layer. It's not anything really technical. It's just like a big warm blanket that you put between the base layer and the outer layer. So for that reason, this is really where you can save some money. Pretty much anything that's going to trap air is going to be good for a mid layer. On the more serious end, you have things like Down and Primaloft and other synthetic fill products. And then you have on the cheaper end, things like Fleece and Flannel, things that you can get from a secondhand store. Like this, this is an amazing mid layer. I got this for like 25 euros from a secondhand store. It's from Salila from the 90s. But like I said, this doesn't have to be anything technical. It just has to trap the heat. Now, if it's really cold and you want to have a more serious mid layer, then you can look at either down 
or a synthetic insulative jacket. What I'm wearing now is the Thermorap UL from Mont Bell. This is a very, very light synthetic jacket. I bought this for lightweight through hiking. So a good time to wear a synthetic mid-layer like this is if you're doing a very high intensity activity, like you're going for a really strenuous hike or you're doing technical mixed climbing, ski touring, anything that's going to likely to make you sweat, it's probably better to wear synthetic. The reason why is because synthetic deals with moisture better. So if I'm gonna be sweating, I'll tend to choose synthetic. One of the downsides of synthetic is that it's generally more bulky than down. When you compare a down to a synthetic sleeping bag, the synthetic is always a lot bigger. But synthetic products are constantly improving. They're always getting better. Nature really isn't improving or it's not doing it very quickly. So synthetic, I would say in a couple of years is going to be far superior to down in a lot of ways. Now we could weigh up the pros and cons of down versus synthetic all day, but realistically, this is horses for courses. Each different adventure, each different set of conditions is going to demand a different jacket in reality. So let's take a look at my down jacket and when and where I use it. This is my down jacket. I've had this since 2014. This is from Malachowski. It's a, a Polish mountaineering brand. So down tends to win over synthetic for a number of reasons. Pound for pound, it's lighter. Apparently it packs down smaller, but I think some of the newer synthetics are getting better at that. But generally down is considered to be a lighter, warmer option. So the structure of the down, it's loft, like how much it expands to be able to trap heat, tends to be more effective than synthetic. So for that reason, if it's really cold, I tend to wear down. The disadvantage of down is it doesn't handle moisture well at all. If you're going into a really wet environment where you're likely to get absolutely soaked, like Tasmania or Scotland, probably wouldn't be wearing down. I'd go for something synthetic. Another side of down is that it's expensive. It comes from animals. It has to be pulled directly from an animal, in some cases from a live animal. So I really recommend looking into ethical down sources, byproducts of the meat industry, rather than live plucking. That shit is horrendous. Okay, when it comes to pants and mid layers, this is always a tricky one. But honestly, for me, I don't think I've ever worn a mid layer on my bottoms when out in the mountains because I'm generally being very active. I don't own down pants. I don't own any sort of synthetic pants. I'm either just never in cold enough environments or I'm being so active that it's just not necessary because I'm pretty warm anyway. So what I tend to wear on my bottom half is somewhere between a mid layer and an outer layer, and that is soft shell. Soft shell in winter is surprisingly useful. You would think that it would absorb moisture from the snow, but it really doesn't. I mean, unless you're gonna be sitting around in the snow all day, I think soft shell is absolutely fine. I've been wearing soft shell pants for years and I've never had any kind of issue in the snow. Sometimes if it's quite warm, I'll just wear the soft shell, but if it's colder, I'll have a base layer and then the soft shell over the top. Now, there are certain situations where a soft shell is not really going to be enough. For example, if the snow is really wet, if I'm gonna have a long day in the snow, you know, going skiing, sitting in a chairlift, soft shell isn't really the best. For there, I would tend to go for a hard shell. Same thing goes for really wet conditions. If it's going to be raining, if it's going to be sleet, if it's going to be any kind of wet snow, then I'll tend to go for a hard shell, which is supposed to be a waterproof layer. But as you know, it's not always 100% waterproof. For spring and summer hiking, I've experimented with just using a base layer of polypropylene tights and forgetting the rape pants entirely. And I've also done another 500 miles bringing a light pair of very cheap rain pants that cost me 10 euros. And I can say from that experiment that it is worthwhile just keeping a light pair of cheap rain pants at the bottom of your pack just in case. But it's not going to be enough for much colder weather. So in that circumstance, I'm going to be wearing this, which is a hard shell. These are from Cortazu. I also have the matching jacket. It's like the closest thing that I own to a suit. I wore this jacket on my through hike of the GR11 and I was super stoked with it. This won an ISPO award, a European outdoor industry award a couple of years ago. So I believe it won an award for its breathability, but at the same time, its waterproofing capability. And this is not Gore-Tex. This is another breathable waterproof membrane. So this has been my go-to outer layer for quite a while, whether it's skiing, ski mountaineering, you know, I've used this for hiking or at least just the top. I wouldn't hike in an outer hard shell on the bottom. I'm sure that would just be like a sweat fest straight away. But this has really become my favorite jacket. Unbelievably waterproof, unbelievably breathable. And it has all those features that I like, plenty of pockets, a helmet compatible hood, 
The only thing it doesn't have is pit sips under the arms. So that would be amazing. Pretty much the only thing I don't like about it. So obviously your outer layer is designed to keep you dry. It should be windproof as well because really wind is one of the most important things to avoid if you want to stay warm. There are quite a few jackets on the market, especially from brands like North Face that are moving more in the fashion direction. Pow! Oh! And they have both outer layers and mid layers built in, but those kind of jackets really don't work well with a layering system because they're trying to do two things at once. You want those layers to be working together to give you the best possible solution. You want it to be adaptable. And if need be, you want to be able to put all of those layers on at once in the worst possible scenarios. So it's no use having a gigantic mid-layer jacket that you can't get on the inside of your outer layer. So to sum up, my system looks like this. Base layers, generally wool, often multiple base layers. On the bottom, I tend to use polypropylene. On the top, I tend to use wool, and I try and use wool everywhere else. For the mid layer, I tend to never wear mid layers for pants. Instead, I opt for a soft shell, but I don't often wear a soft shell on my upper body because it's neither really a good mid layer and it's not really a good outer layer. On the top, I tend to wear either fleece, down, synthetic, or even flannel, anything that'll trap the heat in. Remember, it doesn't have to be technical and it doesn't have to be expensive. On the outer layer is when you tend to spend the most money. It's the most technical aspect of your layering system. So remember, this is always subjective. I don't have anything set in stone. I choose my clothing based off the weather and I build this knowledge based on experience. I'm not taking it from a book. I'm not taking people's advice. I just get out and do and see what works. And I encourage you to do the same. That's all for this one. Hit me up with questions in the comments section. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the summit.